Okay, and I think we have a quorum. I'm seeing a good number of people in the chat or in the participants list. So hey everyone, thanks for joining us. So my name is Stacy Potter and I'm a community manager here at WeaveWorks. It's great to see everyone and let us know where you're watching from and what problems you're trying to solve uh, with GitOps and Terraform in the chat. Um, hopefully you're here today to hear from Priyanka, aka Pinky, Ravi, developer experience engineer, and my colleague here at Weaveworks, who will be going over reconciling Terraform resources the GitOps way. If you're brand new to our various Weaveworks or GitOps talks or series, welcome. And if you've been coming to these sessions for a while, welcome back. Let's go to the next slide, please, Pinky. So a little bit of background, if this is your first time coming to one of these events, uh, we've been running these for a while now. The company that Pinky and I work for is called Weaveworks. If you haven't heard of us, we're a startup with distributed remote workforce uh, across the entire globe. So hopefully if you do know us, you know us from so much of the work that we've done in and around open source. You probably have heard of our projects Flux and Flagger, which are in the CNCF as incubating projects, and we've recently submitted our application to graduate. Um, so Flux was also the project that recently that kicked off the term GitOps, and it's really been cool to see lots of adopters of the project and see the community grow over the last few years. And Flagger, as many of you may already know, uh, another open source project from our teammate Stefan Prodan, is um, centered around progressive delivery, such as blue-green or canary, canary deployments. So Cortex is one, another one of the projects that uh, is in the CNCF that we donated. Uh, that helps make Prometheus scalable. I mention that only because Prometheus is a, a key part of the progressive delivery possibilities with Flagger. And of course, there's other projects like Weave Ignite, EKS Cuddle, or control, and now we've GitOps, which is also a free and open source tool um, that provides uh, a UI on top of Flux. Provides a you know a, a, a it's it is sorry, <laughs> just going to restart. We've GitOps is also a free open source tool that provides GitOps for your various needs and has a UI on top of Flux. Um, we have many more, so if you're interested, definitely check us out on GitHub under Weaveworks, as well as the CNCF uh, GitHub where you can find our projects. And of course, we are a company that has paid products and services like Flux support. So if you're interested in learning more about those, please check out the website weave.works, or you can reach out to me or Pinky directly. Uh, so the next slide, please. So a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we've bookmarked an hour for today's session. We may not go that long, but we have an hour. If you have lots of questions, we'll take them at the end. Um, and I'm sure I don't have to explain too much about Zoom these days, but the one thing I'll mention here is that unless you have something really private um, to share in the chat, be sure you change the two to everyone so that everyone in the audience can see your question or comment. Uh, sometimes our audience members answer each other's questions too. So just make sure you do that. Otherwise, I will be copying and pasting into the chat there. Um, okay, so the next slide I think is my final slide, Pinky. And a little bit about how to get connected uh, to us and to the Flux community. So check out the Weave GitOps Terraform controller on GitHub and the docs is, uh, link is also here. Visit the Flux website at fluxcd.io to learn more. And if you make your way over to GitHub, give us a star there and check out the discussions and Q&A. Um, the Flux team, of course, is on the CNCF Slack under the Flux channel. So if you need an invite, I will drop all of these links into the chat in just a bit. So without further ado, that's my quick brief intro. I will turn it over to Pinky for the rest of the presentation. Oh, no, I clicked the link. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to. I clicked one of the links on the slide. <laughs> there you go. Okay, okay we're back. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to first basically just give a brief intro into what is GitOps and then what is Flux, um, just in case you're new here and you're just looking for a way to get, you know, something to manage your Terraform um, uh, resources through a GitOps way. So 
First off, what is GitOps? Um, it's just an operating model for cloud native applications such as Kubernetes. It's not limited to Kubernetes. If you are doing a multi-cloud infrastructure, you can still use GitOps, but since we'll be focusing on Flux for this talk, we'll be talking about Kubernetes. Um, it utilizes a version controlled system, most commonly Git as the single source of truth. It enables continuous delivery through automated deployment, monitoring and management by a version controlled system. And basically managing your infrastructure and applications declaratively is the whole goal here. So that leads us into the GitOps principles. The first one being um, a system managed by GitOps must have its desired state expressed declaratively. Um, when things are written in code, they're more reusable, there's an audit trail, there's a bunch of benefits that come there. And I uh, forgot to mention, the first thing I like to say here is that these are a set of best practices that have been defined through discussions with many different vendors and users by the GitOps working group. Um, you can actually go to opengitops.dev to learn more about that. But don't feel like you have to have them all done in order to use GitOps. Everyone's journey looks really different and you can start using GitOps even if you're, you don't have this setup yet. And then you can harden and tweak your setup to meet these guidelines as you go. The second principle is that a desired state is stored in a way that enforces immutability versioning and retains a complete version history. So there's no sneaking in a change. Everything, there's a whole audit trail that's there. The third one is that software agents automatically pull the desired state declaration from the source. And the fourth one is that software agents continuously observe actual system state and attempt to apply the desired state. So this means that you wouldn't have things like configuration drift and stuff like that. So there's something that's always listening to your source and making sure that that's what's actually deployed. So what are the benefits of GitOps? Um, people that use GitOps experience many different benefits, including stronger security guarantees, increased developer and operational productivity, enhanced developer experience, improved stability, higher reliability, and a consistency in standardization. So because everything is um, treated as code, everything is declarative, that creates a direct impact on security as well as consistency and standardization. Um, if all configuration and security policy is treated as code, then everything can be held in version control. So any and all changes um, that are made are reviewed and then they're input into an automation, like an automated pipeline. There's no manual processes. And hopefully that means you're less likely to be at work on a weekend. <laughs> so that increases the um, productivity as well. So what is Flux? Flux is a Git-centric package manager for your applications, but Git isn't the only system you technically can use as a source. Um, and it provides a set of continuous and progressive delivery solutions for Kubernetes. It's a natural extension of the benefits of Kubernetes. And at the core, it's basically just continuously monitoring your version control system and applying the desired state that's been declaratively stated there. And the nice part of this, like I mentioned earlier, is that you don't have to worry about configuration drift because it reconciles on a schedule. And if things have gotten out of sync for some reason, it will set it back to your desired state. And Flux really reduces developer burden because it removes the need for manual deployment processes. And the command line tool, the CLI is very, is a convenient way to bootstrap the system in a cluster. I will show that later really quickly and um, to access the custom resources that actually make up the API. So this is just a brief slide that we made about Flux's journey as an open source project. Stacy already really kind of touched on this, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it. Um, but like she said, we just applied for graduation, which is really exciting. So, okay, so these are some statements that we like to just highlight about Flux. The first one being that Flux provide get, provides GitOps for both apps and infrastructure. And like Stacy mentioned, along with uh, using Flagger, you can actually deploy apps with canaries, feature flags, whatever your progressive delivery needs are. And um, you just push to Git and Flux does the rest. Uh, it manages deployments through, some, through automatic reconciliation. And it works with your existing tools. It works with your Git providers. Um, you can even use S3 compatible buckets as a source, all major container registries and all CI workflow providers as well. And it works with any Kubernetes and all common Kubernetes tooling. This is kind of the, the beauty of it too, that it really just plays well with what you're already using and what your own um, ecosystem already looks like. Flux does multi-tenancy and as we like to say, multi-everything. Um, Flux uses true Kubernetes RBAC via impersonation and supports multiple Git repositories. You can um, multi-cluster infrastructure and apps work out of the box with cluster API. And you can actually um, use one Kubernetes cluster to manage apps in either the same 
or in other clusters, spin up additional clusters itself and manage cl uh, clusters, including lifecycle and fleets as well. And then Flux also has alerting and notification. Um, you can, it provides health assessment, alerting to external systems and external events handling. And users trust Flux. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you why I trusted Flux as a user as well, but we get great feedback uh, about Flux constantly. And also Flux has a really lovely community that is very easy to work with. If you um, do wanna you know, get started contributing, we welcome contributors of any kind. Um, the components of Flux are on Kubernetes core controller runtime. So anyone can contribute and its functionality can be extended very easily. And then these are the benefits of Flux. So Flux actually reduces developer burden. It removes the whole cube control problem. You don't have to worry about cube control versions to be able to interact with the cluster. It's also very extensible, it's versatile, it works with existing tools that you're already using, super flexible. Um, and then it has a microservice architecture, so it's modular. And as I mentioned before, it's a natural extension of Kubernetes. And so you can really just pick and choose and tailor your own experience and make it work for what you're doing. So I mentioned that Flux is a microservice architecture. And so Flux is actually a set of Kubernetes controllers. And if you're not familiar with controllers, a controller handles the life cycle of objects in Kubernetes. So what should be done when the object is created, when it's updated, deleted, et cetera. Um, and so each controller does a different thing. So the source controller actually fetches art resources and stores them as artifacts. And then the customized controller actually applies those manifests, um, runs manifest generation using customized. The Helm controller does deployment of Helm charts. And then I didn't mention it here, but the Terraform controller, we're about to talk about it, but it goes along with those. And then the notification controller does notification dispatch. And then the image controllers actually um, work together to update a Git repository when new container images are available. Oh, I went backwards. Okay, so Flux works with other tools. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but this is just a brief, um, you know, just a few that I wanted to mention, but there's so many more, so you know it can work with whatever. And um, I just wanted to touch on like why I really love Flux and why I, as a user was really drawn to it. It makes your life easier. You don't have to worry about manual processes. You don't have to worry about your deployments getting out of sync. There's a lot of things that you just it make. It just makes you. Uh, it puts your mind at ease. And then also multi tenancy is really cool with uh, Flux. It's whichever way you're using multi tenancy, soft tenancy, hard tenancy. It just works really well. Um, and then depends on is a nice feature where if you have something that's reliant on another deployment, such as a database, you can actually make sure that um, the database is stood up first before your, your deployment stands up as well. And then Helm integration is really awesome. And like I mentioned, notifications and alerting is easy to set up and get started with. Bootstrapping is a really simple way uh, to get started with Flux on a new cluster. And that kind of ties into the Flux CLI. I love the Flux CLI. I think it's very um, user friendly and I'll show that in a second in the demo. And then now the Terraform controller, which is really exciting to us because the Terraform controller is a Flux controller that can manage your Terraform resources. And it's not just limited to Kubernetes resources. It can manage any of the Terraform resources that you're already using. And the features of it are, are that you can actually set it up so that you can do manual approvals or you can set it up to do auto approvals. Um, and then you can actually get the outputs after if you're using outputs. And optionally, you can take those outputs and actually output them into a Kubernetes secret as well, if that's what you need. And then there is an additional CLI, the TF, um, the TF Cuddle CLI. <laughs> Um, and that CLI is actually very similar to the Flux CLI. If you're used to that CLI, it's a very similar user experience in terms of like the subcommands and stuff. So it's, it's pretty easy to learn if you've already been doing Flux. And, you know, we've been getting requests for this controller for a long time. Uh, we've been getting requests for, oh, can you please make a solution that would work with Terraform? And this is exactly that. It really just does what you know everyone's been asking for, and it's pretty exciting. We're really excited about this controller. Um, okay, so the benefits of the Terraform controller are that you know you can actually use your your Terraform deployments with full GitOps automation now, and it's you know GitOps for your existing Terraform resources. You can use the GitOps model for plan and manually apply if you want to through Terraform, and there is drift detection of Terraform resources, and basically it becomes the glue 
between Terraform resources and your Kubernetes workloads as well. Um, yeah, so even just the other day we were talking to a consumer and I mentioned this um, feature, this Terraform controller, and even they were excited about it because they hadn't heard about it yet. So we're really excited about this addition. And we've actually you know, started working with HashiCorp a little too. And so we're building a relationship with them. So there's gonna be more support in that way as well, which is really exciting to us as well. So now, without further ado, I will get into the demo. So I'm going to escape. Okay, so first thing I wanted to mention is that there is this um, Terraform controller documentation here, and you can actually find it linked in the, um, the GitHub page for the Terraform controller, but it's really great. It gives you, you know, examples and how to actually get started with it. It mentions all of those features I was talking about that I'm going to show in a second, but it's a really great documentation if you want to get started with this. So, and I think Stacy's going to drop that link too. Oh, there she is. <laughs> so yeah, I yeah. did want to. I just put that in the chat. Oh. And I before you actually dive in, yeah. you already have a question, and I don't oh, know okay. if you're going to get right into this, but I figure mm -hmm. let's go ahead and ask it now, and then you okay. can you can decide to answer it, or or we can post it at the end. Um, so uh, Vinicius is says I've been struggling for a while already finding the best version to streamline the benefits of Flux uh, plus provision of EKS slash GKE clusters with Terraform slash EKS cuddle. Uh, considering what is a bit, it's a bit overwhelming, uh, what could be the best way slash structure to manage that? Oh, that is a good question. Um, hmm. I don't know if Tom has any input. <laughs> I don't, that's a yeah, really I'm good not... question. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good question. Which is, uh, I'm actually writing out the answer for you, so I'll put that oh, in, the chat in a few minutes. Okay, great. Thanks, Tom. And then maybe I'll come back to it after Pinky's done, and we can um, and we can read it aloud. So yeah, and just to let y'all know, Tom PTS. is actually a maintainer of the TF controller, so that's why we brought him yes. here today. <laughs> so and he uh, he's also a customer's reliability engineer here at Reworks as well. So thanks for being here, Tom. Okay, okay, so now I will uh, go into the demo. So I've already set up a little kind cluster. Um, and then now I'm just going to bootstrap that cluster. Um, so I want to show really fast, if you're not familiar with the, um, the Flux CLI, that, like I was saying, it's very, very user friendly. If you do any help commands, it'll actually, the first thing it'll tell you is, you know, what this command is about to do. So in this case, the bootstrap command is going to actually create a GitHub repository um, with the repository name you give, if it doesn't already exist. And then it's actually going to commit all the manifests of the toolkit into that main branch. And then it configures itself to actually synchronize with that repository. So it's listening to itself. And if the toolkit components are already present on the cluster, then the bootstrap command will actually perform an upgrade. So it'll update to the latest version of Flux for you and push those, those um, uh, manifests as well, which is really, really cool. And then another thing that I really like about the CLI is that it gives you all these examples. So if you are new to it and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing here, then you can actually just copy and paste these and fill them in with your info and just run it. And it's super easy to use. Okay, so now, and hopefully this is big enough for anyone. I mean, if it's not big enough for anyone, just tell me I can make it bigger. So yeah. Okay, so we're gonna grab this bootstrap command. And what this is doing is it's going to create this repository called the TF controller demo. It doesn't already exist. I don't have it in my, um, my namespace. And um, it's going to actually set it up. So within that repository, the customization is going to be set up to actually be listening to what's in this my this cluster slash my cluster path. So only files within that will be um, reconciled, will be applied, sorry. Okay, and then this will take a second um, to actually apply because it's actually standing up the, uh, the controllers as well. So it's standing up all of the resources that are needed. So it's done and we can do a, um, so it created that flux system namespace as well. So that's where all the components live. So we can see that all of the controllers are now up and running. And if we go back here to my repositories and I refresh, 
it is now here, updated one minute ago. And if I go in here, we can see what it created. So it created this GOTK components YAML. And this just, like I said, it creates that new flux system namespace where all, everything lives. And it has the CRDs that are necessary for Flux. And then if you keep scrolling, and this is a really long file, it has all of those deployments that are needed. So all of those controllers manifest and everything like that. So if we go back, it also created this sync, which is what I was talking about um, with that synchronization. This is actually creating a Git repository source. And that is telling the source controller, hey, go listen to this, um, this repository the itself. It's pointing to itself. And on every one minute interval, go and check that there's any changes, go and pull the manifest. And then the customization is saying, yeah, so listen to that source that was just created above and um, apply the, the files within that path on a 10 minute interval. So every 10 minutes go and apply those manifests. And lastly, there's this customization.yaml. So, you know, there's a lot of confusion sometimes between the customization controller and customization. The reason it's called the customization controller is because it's actually using customization in the background. So if there is a customization.yaml file within the folder, it's actually going to um, reference that. So it's going to take whatever resources are mentioned there. It'll ignore the other files, you know, that aren't mentioned. But if there's not a customization.yaml already specified, it basically creates one itself in the background. So that's that's why it applies all of the files it finds. It just creates a customization.yaml with everything. So that's that. And now we can go back and we are going to actually um, clone that repo that we just created. Sorry, copy and pasting my commands. Okay, so we're gonna clone that. And we'll CD into it so that we can actually get the Terraform controller stood up. We're gonna make a folder now for that as well. So we're gonna make a little folder under my cluster for the Terraform controller. And that's just because I keep forgetting to add things to my customization.yaml if I don't do it this way. So this is what's happening. So you can do it any way you want, but this way at least I know that the customization is going to listen to this folder as well. So. Um, I'm going to open this in VS Code real fast so that I can add those files. So now we have this TF controller folder, and I'm just going to make a file in here called the um, TF controller. Helm. So the TF controller is actually already out there as a Helm chart, and I am going to use the um, Helm controller to stand this up. So. Let's create a source that's pointing to a Helm repository first. So what this is doing is it's pointing to the um, TF controller Helm repository. That's what the source is doing. And then this Helm release is telling the Helm controller to actually go stand up this Helm chart with these specs. So that's what's happening here. Let me make this bigger. And then, um, so we're gonna save that. I'm going to add those changes and commit them. All right, so now that's changes pushed and we'll go back here and say, um, sorry, KS flux system dash dash with source. And what this is doing is it's telling that customization called flux system that was created to actually reconcile, but the dash dash with source is telling it to actually reconcile the source that it's dependent on first. So go reconcile the flux system source and then reconcile the customization. That way, if there's a change, you know, it'll pull it. And now if we do a, um, Keep it whole dash n flux system get pods. We can see that the Terraform controller is now up and running as well. So yay, that's pretty exciting. So then we will um, actually point it to, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do a very simple example, um, just a hello world with the simple output. I already have that project um, cloned here and opened here. Let me just open it. Yeah. So. 
Here you can see it's just a simple um, Terraform file, a main.tf with a output that just says hello, and then it's pointing to this variable and the default is world. So it'll just say hello world exclamation point as it currently is, right? So we are going to point a file to actually, um, to, we're gonna create a source and a, a Terraform kind to actually point and, and um, apply that as well. So let's go ahead and do that now. And we'll just add it under here as well. So we'll say, hello world sync yaml. And in here, we will put simply this. So this is saying that um, go listen to that repo. And this is where that repo lives that I just showed in VS Code. Um, with that, just that main.tf, that's all it has in there. So this is saying, go listen to it. And then this is the Terraform kind. This is the magic. This is telling the Terraform controller, hey, go um, apply this, this resource. So it's a, like exactly like how the Helm controller and the, the customization controller works. It's got the interval and everything like that. This approve plan is an interesting thing here. This is what I was mentioning earlier, where you can do manual approvals or automatic auto auto approval, sorry. And if you leave it blank like this, or just take this field out altogether, it will default to manual approvals. So right now it is actually set to do manual approvals. And I just wanted to show what that looks like first, and then I'll show what it looks like with um, an automatic approval as well. So now Actually, I, I think, go, I think yeah. the, the other terminal that you're in, or is that VS code that you're in? Yeah, um, is it not visible? Oh, it's, it's too just small. A little it's too small. small. Yeah, okay, all I've been it. doing in it, by the way, <laughs> is just get add and get push. So like, don't worry, I've just been doing commits and pushes. So nothing exciting, at least that you've been missing, but yeah, that's awesome, good to know. <laughs> okay, so um, I'll do another reconciliation now that I've made that change. And then we can go look if the source was created. So we can do a flux get source get dash a. So this is that command is just saying go get all sources um, that are of type get regardless of namespace. In this case, they just happen to be in the same namespace. Um, so you can see that there's now a hello world source that was created. And then we can so there's two ways now that we can actually go see the um, the Terraform that was created the Terraform controller, you know, the thing that was created. So the first one is that we can do cube control get terraform you know the terraform kind and oh let's say specify that it's in the flux system namespace and so you can see that it's there it's not ready i'm guessing the plan is still happening so it's it's blank for now but the other way to do it is through the uh, tf cuddle sorry i'm getting used to saying that a lot the tf cuddle um, command, you can just say TF cuddle dash. Uh, I'm going to show it really fast, just briefly. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. Um, lots of cool things, but basically I'm just going to run the TF cuddle get to just get the Terraform resources, but you can do a lot of things. You can even actually set up the Terraform controller in this way. I just wanted to show it with the, um, the Helm release and, you know, so that you can push it and all that. I haven't played around with that uh, yet, so I'm not too sure with how, like, how the details of that are. And keep in mind, the TF um, cuddle is still a work in progress. You can actually install it as a pre-release in um, the latest version if you go to the GitHub and look at the releases, but just know that it's a pre-release. So it's still being worked on. And there's still a few things, you know, that uh, are taking place. <laughs> um, so if, there, if you find any bugs, let us know, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and so, okay, so let's go ahead and say, TF cuddle get, and you can see here now it is it, the plan has happened. You know it's there, and just uh, as we I guess expected <laughs> or hopefully expected, it's saying you know set the approved plan. It didn't actually apply it yet. It's waiting for approval, and there are a couple of ways to do this. There is um, that the sub command of the um, Terraform TF cuddle uh, CLI, and you can say you know. Um, you can you can actually approve it, but I want to show how you can do it through um, Git. So we'll go back to Git, and you can actually take this. 
all of it, I guess, and put it in the um, the approved plan section here. So if I go to that that sink that we created and you know um, the the Terraform kind section and actually add it to the approved plan, I can tell it in this way to um, approve that plan. This is how I'm giving my approval. And and by the way, this is the commit hash, so that's how it knows that you're approving that commit hash. Um, add approval. Sorry, I'm bad at typing and talking. So okay, so that's done. Um, and then now we can go back to here and do another reconcile. Uh, Oh, what am I doing? Sorry, got distracted. Source git flux system. Okay. No. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> this is why I can't multitask. It's I want to do the customization, but I'll do them separately. It's fine. So I can show you how that you can do them separately, I guess. But <laughs> instead of the dash dash with source. Okay, so now that's reconciled. Um, and if we go back and do a it might take a second actually. Let's see. Um Or I did something. Oh yeah, okay. It just took a second. Sorry. Um, so it now is uh, applied. So you can see it says applied successfully. Woo! And if I um, wanted to see it, I can actually do. In this case, it's a um, like I said, it's the cube control get terraform dash and flux system. I guess I can do a describe. Let's do a describe. So you can see here, you know, that it actually is there. It says it applied successfully. You can see that there's available outputs such as hello world. Um, and now I am going to uh, show you how you can actually change uh, two things. I'm gonna show two things here. I'm gonna show how you can output it to a Kubernetes secret, but also um, how you can do auto approval. So we're just gonna go ahead and change this because I don't really wanna approve it again. So we're gonna say auto approvals. And then we're going to add a section that says, write these outputs to a secret um, in here. So write these outputs to a secret called hello world dash output. And like I said, we don't wanna uh, have to do approval. So we're just gonna let it auto approve. So I'm going to commit that as well. Add auto and output. I'm gonna push that. And then we're gonna reconcile again. So now we're reconciling with the source. We'll wait for that. And then um, okay. So we also need to now reconcile the I don't think we ever needed to reconcile that one. Sorry. So we actually need to reconcile the source that's uh listening to it, right? Because it's a separate repo. We I reconciled the wrong thing, but uh we'll reconcile the source that's actually listening to that hello world um project. And now we've done that. And then we will just um, run another TF cuddle get. And you can see that it um, has done this. And so we can do cube control um, dash n flux system get secrets. And it hasn't stood up yet. So we'll give it a second. Did I push it? I think I pushed it. Is now an okay time for maybe yeah. Tom? While we're waiting on. for it to like, yeah, take while we're waiting. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tom, would you mind just coming on? I know I've seen you just furiously been typing in the <laughs> chat, uh, answering questions here and there, but maybe if there's a, a summary that you can give to some of these top points, would you be willing to do that? Sure, yeah. Um, a lot of good questions. Um, I think uh, Nina was asking uh, if 
Terraform controller uh, supports database migrations. So uh, Terraform controller, it's it's running Terraform. So if you can do the things you can with Terraform, uh, you can use it with Terraform controller. So it's not limited to uh, certain uh, areas of Terraform, like uh, Kubernetes type of stuff. It's anything that um, you can do with Terraform, you should be able to do with Terraform controller. Um, okay, so I'll jump in here because it's it's working now. Um, or it it was it was working before. It just took a second, right? Because Terraform plan and apply and all that. So um, yeah, so now you can see that there's a secret here called hello world dash output. And so if we do a um, we grab that and we take this. Um, I'm sorry, I blinked because I was th thinking of something else. Okay, so I meant to actually change it, but I think this is fine. So I meant to change the value so you can see that it's it also would pick up a change. But if I had changed it to audience, it would say hello audience or something like that. So that's really all I wanted to show were those features. Um, so yeah, now we can move on to questions and if there's any clarifications about this as well. Thanks, Pinky. Yeah, there's been lots of chatter, uh, lots of questions coming back and forth. Um, but I think Tom has pretty much answered everything in the chat. So if anyone has any other questions, I would say go ahead and pop them into the chat now. You can definitely, uh, definitely take them so going back to Vinicius's, um, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, <laughs> my apologies. So Tom, did you want to summarize on Vinicius's question and, um, and your answer there as well? Yeah, sure. Um, I think one of the first questions Vinicius was asking is, um, how would you streamline uh, Flux, CD, and uh, cluster provisioning with Terraform? and what's the best way of structuring it. So my answer is uh, structuring Terraform is a art. It's, there's no uh, uh, science behind it. It depend, depends on the organization have structured it differently with Terraform modules, modules in the one repo and actual uh, files in a different repo or in the same repo. So it really depends on your organization and how you wanna manage those. Um, so whatever makes sense to you on, uh, on Terraform, um, uh, structuring your Terraform repos uh, would make sense uh, with Terraform controller. Terraform controller doesn't really care how you structure it. Um, it just, uh, like uh, Pingu is showing, you just need to point it to a, a file and uh, that you want to reconcile with Terraform controller. That should work. And uh, I think a follow-up question is, uh, also related to state and OS on that regard, uh, GCP, AWS, okay, secrets, where is it configured? Um, uh, is that question about the Terraform state, um, how, how you would uh, store those? Um, so those, those secrets, you can, uh, you can store them as Kubernetes secrets and provide them as variables into your uh, Terraform files, uh, Terraform provide, uh, you, in Terraform provider or uh, the, the state section, you can uh, use variables as, as I think I remember correctly. And, and um, yeah, that's how you uh, store those secrets. We're using as much of Kubernetes native functionalities and flux functionalities as much as possible. So we don't uh, create new um, kind of uh, uh, unique type of style when, 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 when we write this uh, Terraform controller. Got it, thanks, Benicia says, and thanks for the answers. Fantastic. Thanks everybody. All right, I'm gonna do one last call out for any questions, but Pinky, do you wanna, I know you're showing the slide, so give everyone the, the resources there.
Yeah, so um, like Stacy shared, the TF controller lives there in our GitHub, in our WeaveWorks GitHub. And um, there's also a link to the Terraform controller docs. I think Stacy just posted both of those actually again. You can um, go star both our uh, TF controller and our Flux uh, to repo as well. We love that. And then also, if you want to learn more just about Flux in general, you can go to fluxcd.io. That's where our documentation for Flux lives. Um, the TF controller is not yet in that documentation. It will be. Um, but since it's so new, we're still working through that. And then also join us um, on our CNCF Slack. We have a Flux channel. And join our Weave online user group so you don't miss future talks like this one. There's a lot of great talks that are going to be coming up soon, too. So we're very excited about that. Great. Thank you so much, Pinky. This was awesome. And you're getting lots of kudos and thanks in the chat. So thanks, Tom, for being here and answering all these great questions. Thank you, audience, for attending. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you next time. And uh, Pinky will be at KubeCon EU as well and GitOpsCon. So if you're going to be there, make sure you pop by the Flux booth <laughs> and uh, say hi to Pinky. So um, thanks, everybody. Really appreciate everyone being here. Have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, wherever you might be. Thanks so much.